Hey everyone, Teresa Mattis here. Today I'm going to show you how to use the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So, let's get started. Go ahead and open Premiere Pro CC, or whatever version of Premiere Pro you're using. Click on New Project, name your project, and click OK. First, you're going to want to import your media. Head on over to your project panel and double click. Select the media you wish to edit and click Import. You can choose to either view your media as a list or a thumbnail. If you want to preview a video clip, double click it. It'll pop up in the preview panel above your project panel. You can play it and scrub through it here. Once you're ready to start editing, you can get started in a couple ways. One, you can scrub through each clip individually, select your in and out points using the I and O on your keyboard, and drag the media onto your timeline. Two, you can drag your media straight from the project panel to your timeline. Or three, you can select multiple video clips from your project panel and drag them onto your timeline. If you do this, you can change the order in which they're placed onto the timeline by toggling the media start switch in the project panel before you drag your footage over. Once you drag your footage onto your timeline, your timeline automatically changes its settings to match your footage. For example, if you recorded in 1920 by 1080p at 29.97 frames per second and you dragged your footage onto your timeline for the first time, your timeline would automatically change its settings to be 1920 by 1080p at 29.97 frames per second. You can change your sequence settings at any time by clicking on the sequence tab at the top of the screen and clicking sequence settings. Now, looking at your timeline, you can see several things. V1 stands for video one. Your footage will drop into your timeline depending on whichever V you have selected. If you have V1 selected, it'll drop onto layer V1. If you unselect V1 and select V2, you'll be able to drag and drop footage onto the V2 layer. The same goes for the audio. A1 is for audio one, A2 for audio two, and so on. Your video layers are above this gray line and your audio layers are directly under the line. To preview your sequence, click the space bar on your Mac. Usually, your audio is connected to your video clip when you drag footage onto your timeline. However, if you drag an audio clip only, just the audio track will show up. If you'd like to unlink your video's audio track so you can move around the audio track unsynced from its video clip, then right click the clip and select unlink. Once this is done, you can move around the two tracks freely. Delete one of the two, or relink the audio to another video layer. Now that you have some footage on your timeline, you can begin editing. Use the C shortcut on your keyboard to cut your footage. Once you've hit C, click your clip wherever you'd like to cut it in two. Once you're done cutting the footage and you'd like to toggle back to using the select icon, click V. From here, you can move your footage around the timeline, select and delete the clips you don't prefer, and shorten or extend the ends of the footage that you've already placed onto your sequence. You can also right click any footage on your timeline and select any of the options available. For example, if you wanted to slow down or speed up your clip, you'd right click it, then click speed duration. Once you select a clip, you can toggle over to your effect controls tab in the upper left hand menu. From here, you can see that you can change both video effects as well as audio effects. Any further effects can be added by dropping down this arrow icon, clicking effects, searching for the effect you'd like to use, dragging it onto your clip, and then altering the settings in the effect controls menu. You can add transitions in this way, or you could right click on the transition point between two clips, then select apply default transitions to add a simple crossfade. You can adjust this by selecting and adjusting it in the effects control panel or by dragging the ends accordingly. If you'd like to add a text layer, head over to your project menu and click on this button below. You can choose to add a title, a color mat, a new sequence entirely, an adjustment layer, the list goes on. But like I said, you're looking to add a text layer. So click title and name it whatever you'd like. This new window comes up with your text creation settings. Use the buttons on the left to get started. Make sure you select the text icon, drag yourself a text box in your preview menu, and type whatever you'd like. You can change the look of your text if you highlight it 
and adjust it with any of the other options on all sides of the preview menu. Once you've got your text looking how you'd prefer, X out the window. Notice that now you have a title in your project menu. You can now drag this onto your timeline and adjust any of the settings you'd like. If you'd like to duplicate your footage, you can copy paste with Command C and Command V, or you can select your clip, hold down Option on your Mac, and drag it to another layer. It'll create a copy of the clip you selected. From here, say you wanted to overlay some footage. Since you've placed some footage over the top of another clip, you can go into the opacity settings in your effect controls menu and decrease the opacity of the overlaying clip. See that once you change your opacity settings, a keyframe pops up on the panel in the right. Keyframes signify that your effect settings will change at that specific point when playing through your timeline. So, say you wanted to fade the overlay in and then out. Well, you'd set your keyframes accordingly. I'd want the footage on V2 to start out at 0% opacity and then fade in to be about at 50% opacity. At the start of the clip, I'd set a keyframe to be 0%, then I'd move ahead to where I'd like it to be at 50% opacity. After this, I'd move ahead to where I'd like it to start fading out again, where I'd set another keyframe at 50%. Then, I'd set my final keyframe at the end of the clip to 0% opacity. Now, you can see when you play through your sequence, the effect looks pretty sweet. If I wanted to go in and change any keyframes, I would click on the clip, go up to the effects controls panel, and adjust it accordingly. I could add another point and adjust the opacity percentage, or I could set another keyframe by clicking this keyframe button. Now, let's just say I decided I didn't like any of these effects. I could go click on this timer button right here and toggle off all keyframes for the selected clip. You're going to want to get used to using keyframes. They're a little complicated at first, but a necessity to learn when editing most videos. You'll use them when altering your audio's volume, adjusting your color effects you place onto your footage, fading in and out text, changing the size of your footage or text, the list goes on and on. Any animation of your footage or text will require keyframes. Once you're done with your video editing and you'd like to export your file, save and close your program. Yep, you heard me right. Close Premiere Pro CC and open Adobe Encoder CC. I'll include another tutorial on how to use Encoder, but until then, just follow these steps. Double click to import the Premiere Pro file that you've been working on. Click the sequence you'd like to export adjust the settings you'd like to export as, and the location you'd like to export to. Then, hit the play button in the upper right hand corner. It's very simple and a lot better than using file export within Premiere Pro. Trust me. All right, that pretty much sums up the basics of Premiere Pro CC. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my official website, www.teresamattis.com, and my consulting website, www.teresamattisconsulting.com. I'll include links to both sites in the description box below. See you next time, and thanks for being awesome.